I think what's throwing me off is that they're calling it X-Men 97 and not X-Men 87. Because you have Emma in her Hellfire Club outfit, you have Magneto in his purple costume, and you have Storm with her mohawk. So we're going to dive into what we can expect from X-Men 97. Shout out to the Powers of X-Men podcast, Dayspring and Flinkman. Boom! What's up, Familia? Dayspring here with an episode of Power of X-Men. What we can expect from X-Men 97. And I did a video a couple of days ago on what we can expect from the panel happening tonight. But I didn't really get into like specifics of the characters. And I started putting together uh, Instagram posts. And I really wanted to say, these are, this is what I want to see out of X-Men 97. And I was like, you know, they have a three-hour event tonight. For those of you not in the loop, Marvel is having an X-Men 60th anniversary panel tonight on Zoom. And if you're a Marvel Unlimited member, you're invited to join. If you're a member of the press, you're welcome to join as well. So we're going to be congregating on Zoom from like 7 p.m. Eastern all the way till 10 p.m. Eastern. And I'm like, you know, it's great to do a retrospective on the X-Men. And they have all these creators here like Walt and Louise Simonson, Chris Claremont, Grant Morrison, Jonathan Hickman, Jerry Dugan. And I'm just like, okay, that's great. It's not going to be just comic book focused, though, because they have Eric and Julie Lewald, who Eric Lewald was the original showrunner for the X-Men animated series. And Julie Lewald was one of the writers. And they have Bo DeMaio, who is the executive producer slash showrunner for X-Men 97. So I'm like... If, if you're celebrating the X-Men 60th anniversary and 60th anniversary in comics, I I, I would say like, yeah, we're not going to get anything other than maybe who won, you know, the X-Men vote or like some of these artists are going to do alternate covers in celebration of the 60th anniversary. But the fact that you're bringing in the X-Men animated folks, that tells me that we're possibly going to be getting a trailer or some more peaks at X-Men 97. So I would be very disappointed if we did not get any of it. But regardless, I wanted to talk about the specific characters from X-Men 97, what we've seen already, and sort of speculate before we get a lot more information out there. I think part of the fun of being an x stan and a Marvel stan is that we can sit down and we can like speculate. And as of right now with X-Men 97, we've only seen character designs. Right. And and that came out of San Diego over the summer. Nothing else has been said. You know, we, we had Lenore Zan on the podcast a couple of days ago and she confirmed there is a season two. But, you know, the way I feel about that, and I've said this before, the way you order animation is 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 sort of you you do a 24 episode order. And then from there, the modern way of doing things is you split that in half. So the first 12 episodes is for season one, the next 12 episodes is for season two. But from a production standpoint, you're only ordering one season, if that makes sense. We saw this with Shira. There was a slight controversy with the Shira revival because they said at the end of season one, Bo's two dads will appear. And then season one came and there were no Bo's two dads. However, they came at the end of season two. And why? It's because from a production standpoint, that was just season one and they divided it, you know, 12 and 12. So it's a production side of things. So I it's nitpicking, but yes, you know, I'm I'm pretty we are getting a season two. And I've said this before, even if the show's really bad, which I highly doubt it will be bad, but even if it is bad, we're getting that season two because they already bought it. It's part of the production stuff. And you know, we see it with Sailor Moon Crystal too. Sailor Moon Crystal, those first 24 episodes, the animation's all one style. And then once they do Sailor Moon Crystal season three, it's a different style and, and so forth. It's because they purchase, you know, the animation. It's cheaper from a production standpoint to divide the costs like that. Anyways, so let's dive into what we can expect from every character we've seen in X-Men 97 images. We're going to speculate. This is 100% just speculation. This is just me examining the 90s and the 80s and what they could possibly do with these characters. I'll also say which characters I think we should see. <clears throat> if it's called X-Men 97, we should have Adam X. But again, we're just going to do a 
full range of speculation and let's get into it. So the first character up on the dock is Cyclops. And so Cyclops is a big question mark for me. Will he and Gene be starting a family? That was supposed to be one of the plots for season two of the original series, which was Gene was going to be pregnant and her and Cyclops were going to be starting this family. Now, we do know the Leewalds have said there have been a lot of plots they wish they would have used. This is all in their books. And I think Cyclops had a couple of them, which also included an episode with Havoc. Or actually, I think Larry Houston is the one who said he wanted to do an episode with Cyclops and Havoc. Regardless, I think the focus for Cyclops is going to be family. And I think the focus for Gene is also going to be family. I think they're going to adapt what happened at the end of the Dark Phoenix saga, where Cyclops sort of goes off on his own. Do I think him and Gene will be divorced and stuff like that? No, absolutely not. I think it's going to be an adaptation of them Maybe they're retired in Alaska. They've started a family. They're the reserved members of the X-Men and they're coming when they need it, when they're, they're needed. Maybe we're going to see baby Rachel. Maybe we're going to see baby Nathan. Maybe we'll even get a hint at someone like Madeline Pryor. We do know for a fact that Larry Houston told us that when Gene read Cable's Mind and Time Fugitives, he saw two you know, parents, and one was Cyclops, and another was a red-haired woman, and he confirmed that that was supposed to be Madeline Pryor. So I, I really do hope that Maddie makes some kind of appearance here. We know that Sinister was very obsessed with Cyclops and Gene in the series. We know he's taken their genetic samples. It was right there on their honeymoon, <laughs> you know, at the beginning of season two. So I would be curious to see if we're going to see Maddie. Did she maybe replace Gene at some point? I would be I would be kind of weird if Gene was replaced by Maddie and Cyclops and no one else noticed because listen, I'm obsessed with the Olsen twins. I can tell the difference between Ashley and Mary Kate very easily. So just because someone kind of comes in and looks like someone doesn't necessarily mean they have their mannerisms or like the way they kind of speak and stuff like that. That would take me so out of the story if no one noticed that Madeline had swapped with Jean. So I hope that is absolutely not the case. I hope Cyclops and Jean are happily married and we see them maybe, you know, raising their family again, Cable and, and little Rachel. Who knows? You know, maybe maybe Gene will have twins and that's how he gets strife instead of doing a very convoluted story. But I think it's also possible that Gene and Cyclops would be starting X Factor and maybe they'll adapt Inferno. Maybe we'll we'll see something like that. I just think there's a lot of like groundwork there that has already been previously established for the series that they can easily go into like X Factor, Inferno, and Gene and Cyclops starting a family. However, they want to decipher that. But I think that's where I would go with Cyclops and Gene if I was looking at all this stuff. Next up is Wolverine. And I'm I'm kind of like curious what what could we do with Wolverine? Well, I think Wolverine in the 80s and 90s was absolutely notoriously known for having sidekicks. So will he and Jubilee be training? Would he be t training Kitty Pride? C could we get Kitty Pride back? We know Allison Court is going to be on the series, but he's not returning as Jubilee because she herself is not Asian. Would she be doing Kitty Pride or someone like that? Maybe Pixie. You know, again, I I wouldn't. I'm not going to hold them to say. I'm not going to. I don't want to limit ourselves by saying, well, Pixie isn't from the 80s or the 90s because I do believe again what the charm of the original series was that it was sort of all like a, a melting pot of all these X-Men stories but I think pairing Wolverine with a sidekick whether it's Pixie whether it's Miss Marvel because we know she's a mutant in the MCU now whether it's with Jubilee or Kitty I, I, I'm happy to see Wolverine have that sort of rapport I want them to start hinting at X-23 slash Laura slash Wolverine. I think we Laura is such a popular character in the comic books right now. Everyone loves Wolverine, Laura. So why don't we get her in the series? What I think they can also do is if Magneto's leading the X-Men, Wolverine and Magneto are at odds with each other, and maybe we adapt Fatal Attractions, you know, for the series. And I would love it if this first season, these first 12 episodes, or however the episode count is, I would love it if we ended with Wolverine going feral, like kind of like how we saw him in 97. And that's like sort of like a little note I want to give here. I really do think that the series is going to build towards those 90s plots. So 
I think it's very possible we'll get an onslaught Age of Apocalypse adaptation, but I think the series has to build towards those, you know, initially. We've talked about this before endlessly on the podcast. What makes X-Men stories so incredibly unique is that you built towards them. You just can't rush certain X stories. It is a cause and effect, right? We've seen this with the Dark Phoenix saga in the Fox X-Men. You don't just rush something like that. You really have to show Jean being the heart and soul of the X-Men, her turning into good Phoenix, and then Dark Phoenix, right? It is They, they did it wonderfully in the original animated series. But you know, I think Fatal Attractions, we already have that history between Magneto and Wolverine. So I would love to see Fatal Attractions. X-23, Laura Wolverine, I would love to see her already hinted at. Maybe she's being grown. Maybe someone steals a genetic sample from Wolverine. I don't care. No sé qué. I just want her to be there. But I would love for this first season, again, to end with Wolverine going feral. In terms of the love triangle, I hope it's still present there. I think that's a really unique aspect of Cyclops, Jean, and Wolverine in the 80s and 90s. It is a bit antiquated, I have to I have to say. I love how they're handling it on Krakoa right now, but at least show it evolve. You know what I mean? Like, let's see them evolve. Maybe Wolverine has sort of come to terms with the fact that Jean and Cyclops have settled. Maybe Wolverine is secretly Rachel's father. That was something that was sort of hinted at in the comics. So I'm curious to see where they're going to go with it. Our next up is Storm. And listen, we know Forge is in the series. And this is going to be me spiraling where I think Forge and Storm will be a couple when the series picks up up and i would love that i think it's i I think having storm as a as a leader of the x-men and forge as sort of the leader of x-factor and they have you know a romance perfect absolutely perfect storm to me in the 80s and the 90s is a perfect X leader. So I would love to see her there. I don't really want to see a division between blue and gold just yet. I wouldn't mind again if that was something that came a little later on in the series. But again, my the way I'm kind of constructing this is Cyclops and Jean are in Alaska raising a family. Maybe they've started X Factor. Magneto and Storm are leading the X-Men at the mansion. Magneto is focused solely on the New Mutant. Storm is leading the field X-Men team. That is sort of where I would love to see it. Now you have someone like Forge who is overseeing X-Factor. And X-Factor also brings in Havoc. And that is a great thing for Cyclops. So I would think that Storm and Forge together would make a lot of sense to me. Also, what's really interesting is that we have Callisto as well in the series, and Callisto was already already previously in the series, as was Forge, of course. But I think we're going to see Storm kind of taking ownership and a leadership role as well with the Morlocks. And maybe we're going to get a Marauders story. Maybe we're going to get the Mutant Massacre story, which we'll get into when we talk about Gambit. But the other person who's in it in the promo image is, is Val Cooper. Val Cooper has strong ties to X-Factor, so right there with Forge. Freedom Force with with Mystique and and that version of the Brotherhood and Project Wide Awake, which was a huge subplot with the X-Men. So I think Project Wide Awake would be an interesting thing to do. It's a government going after all the mutants with Sentinels. Let's see where they go with it. Will will they allude to Nimrod coming online? Again, that's kind of like a Krakoan story, but Nimrod has already appeared. In the X-Men animated series, he has been a looming threat for them. So I would really, really love to see them incorporate all of these elements, especially with someone like Val Cooper, who is sort of like a government conduit, (laughs) you know, for all these like stories that can happen. We could get Freedom Force. We can get Project Wide Awake. We can see X-Factor. I think it's most likely going to be X-Factor. I'm going to be very honest with you. I think Val Cooper and Forge are spearheading X-Factor. Storm and we'll have her subplot with Callisto and maybe it's a mutant massacre. But I think if I had to call it, I'm gonna I, I want Storm and Forge together and hopefully we get an adaptation of that beautiful scene where Storm and, and Forge break up and Storm falls on the floor. She's like, I was gonna say yes. I mean, listen, Storm dodged a bullet there. <laughs> but you know, I, I want to see these stories adapted. Next up is Rogue and I think we may start the series off with Rogue and Magneto as a couple. 
I think if you're coming into the series, you know Rogue and Gambit are the flagship couple. No shade to Gina Scott. We're huge fans of Jean here. She is our god queen. But most of the people I speak to who are non like obsessive X stands, who are just they watched the cartoon growing up, they enjoyed the movies, they check in on X Men here and there, they are obsessed with Rogue and Gambit. And unfortunately, you do need to tell stories. You do need to have tension. And you can't just keep Rogue and Gambit doing that same dance over and over again. Like, can she touch him? Can they be a couple? I think at a certain point, we know they need to, we we need to evolve their narrative. So I would love it. Here's what I would love. I would love it if we had Rogue with Magneto, because we know in the age of Apocalypse, Magneto and Rogue were able to sort of touch each other because their powers kind of canceled out. How? Ever they want to adapt it, but I would find it very curious if we get that version of Rogue and Magneto together. If this version of Rogue and Magneto are together in, in, in once once we pick up the series, I'm not saying they have to stay together because we know in the comics they sort of went back and forth, especially during Mike Carey's run. But I would love a scene with Rogue, Magneto, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch. I was thinking about Wanda, and you know, someone was explaining to me, and I forgot who it was. But for all intents and purposes, the X-Men animated series Scarlet Witch is a mutant, and that IP is handled differently than the MCU Scarlet Witch IP, the comic book Scarlet Witch IP. That makes no sense to me. I would imagine the character is its own IP, and however those adaptations happen in other in other forms of media, you want to be consistent with it. But maybe we'll see Wanda and Pietro not being mutants here, but from my understanding, the way it sort of worked out from an IP standpoint, Scarlet Witch and Pietro are mutants. How that happens, will that stick? I don't know. If I if I were Marvel, and listen, I want them to be mutants, but if I were Marvel, I'd be like, nope, they're not mutants. They're not going to be an X-Men animated series. We have done all this work to make Wanda not a mutant. That That's what personally I, I would do from a business perspective. It's not something I would want as a fan. I want Wanda right there as a mutant with with Quicksilver. So let's see where it goes. But again, Quicksilver, I think, is a likely candidate given that we have Val Cooper and Forge. I think X-Factor is a done deal. I think we're going to see X-Factor here. Rogue, again, I think we're going to see Rogue with Magneto. I think she's going to have a larger leadership role in the X-Men. We're good friends with Lenore Zen on the podcast. We know she is back as Rogue, and we know she is very excited for fans to see what's happening there. She has not told me a single thing about Rogue's subplot. So I don't know anything about Rogue. I'm not holding out on anyone. This is just me, pure speculation. But I'm telling you, I think it's likely that Rogue, given Lenore Zan's iconic voice, is going to be a very main character, as she was in the original series. You know, if I was on the production team, I would look at her miniseries which was already kind of adapted in the series already, but I would look at some of the finer tunes and points there because it was, in many ways, a sequel to the Gambit miniseries from the 90s. So let's see where that goes. I would love a Savage Land episode with Rogue and Magneto. I think that's such a hot look. That's the one thing I do want from the series that I want to make sure that they do. It's that they make sure they get some of those iconic images. All right, for Gambit... Gambit is like you know Gambit is a question mark for me because I think they did so much with Gambit already in the series, and the only thing that I can think of for Gambit is going to be the Mutant Massacre and his role with the Marauders there. You know what I mean? But, which is something that comes in later on in the '90s slash early aughts. But they already did kind of adapt the Lee Weeks miniseries I was just talking about. God, but that was such a beautiful comic. And the episode, though a really great episode, was a loose adaptation of it. They can certainly revisit it. I I don't know. Listen, they're doing Daredevil Born Again, again, even though it was already done in the Netflix series. So, you know, power to them if they if they want to revisit that. I I have no qualms with it. I putting my business hat on if I was in that editorial team doing X-Men 97 be like, ah, I think this is going to be a little repetitive. Maybe we should do something different for the fans like his involvement with the Marauders and the Mutant Massacre. So let's see where that kind of goes. I would love to see Belladonna back. 
I think let's send Gambit to New Orleans. I think that would be so wonderful. I, I would enjoy it so much and get some really beautiful animation of New Orleans and Gambit there. Like especially that scene in 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 the miniseries we've been talking about where Gambit is just like on a church top. Oh my God, adapt it. I don't even care if it doesn't even make sense from a physics standpoint. I want that adapted there 100%. But I think the idea of Rogue and Gambit in the series is that they're not going to be together and they're going to have their own adventures, but I would hope that they come back towards the end. Let's see where they go. All right, next up is Beast, the sociopathic motherfucker Beast. I Listen, what, 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 what can we do with Beast? First of all, George Buza's Beast is one of the best adaptations of the character. So when I say we hate Beast here at Power of X-Men, we're not including George Busa or Kelsey Grammer's interpretation of the character because those are absolutely flawless. And I hope he's quoting Shakespeare. I'd love it to see him quote things other than Shakespeare, maybe like Malcolm Gladwell or Joan Didion or Roxane Gay. I don't think that that would vibe with X-Men 97, but again, thinking of this as like a loose adaptation and X-Men 97 be more of a name and not necessarily a literal timeline, whatever, doesn't matter. I would I would just like to see Beast continuing to quote literature and I want to see him up in a lab trying to cure the legacy virus. And that would be wonderful if they do Executioner Song, right? So that would be another plot I would do or adapt is Executioner Song. You know, we have to get Xavier back on Earth, and we'll talk about that once we get to Xavier. But I think Executioner Song and the legacy virus being released by Strife and Sinister would be absolutely perfect. And I think that would give Beast a lot to do, make him active, make, make him the Beast we love so much during the 90s. Again, the other big plot that Beast had in the 90s was that he was swapped out for Dark Beast. And much like Madeline Pryor swapping, you know, with Gene, I would be, it would take me out of the story if no one noticed that Hank McCoy was replaced by Dark Beast, right? You'd have to get into Age of Apocalypse. Maybe that could be an Easter egg that we know Age of Apocalypse is coming, right? They can plant that seed and we you know, follow through with it. Or maybe it's just an adaptation of Dark Beast for the animated series. No sé qué. But for me, when I'm thinking of Hank McCoy, the two plots I would do for him is trying to cure the legacy virus or he was swapped out by Dark Beast. That's that's pretty much where I would go with it. Will he be an Avenger? I think it would be really interesting if we picked up and he wasn't even with the X-Men. He's off with the Avengers. And maybe we have like a little episode with him and Wonder Man being BFFs. Let's see. All right. Next up is Jubilee. So when I think of Jubilee in the 90s, I think of two things. One, Generation X and Ileana. So they've already done Jubilee meeting the X-Men and having her adventures there. So a lot of those stories they just can't do. They can't show her, you know, joining, you know, the X-Men through a mall. And, and you know, it, it's, it's just already been done. She's already established member of the X-Men team. We did see her with the Generation X hair at the end of the series. So I would love it if she was with a newer class, you know. I, I don't I, I would not want her in the new mutants. And that's where I think Magneto is gonna be because we saw Magneto with Sunspot. I I would really want Jubilee still as a member of the team. Maybe she's training with Wolverine. Maybe the legacy virus has been released and she's caring for Colossus's little sister, Ileana. And we're gonna get that iconic story where she's holding where Jean is holding her because Ileana dies. So for Jubilee, I'd love to see that adaptation with Ileana and Jean, or if not, start alluding to Generation X. And if not, if not of those two, she is Wolverine sidekick. They're going on adventures together. Let's see them fight ninjas. Let's see, let's see Wolverine train her instead of Kitty as a ninja. You know, let, let let's see where that goes. All right, next up is Professor X. And I already talked about this in a previous episode. I want Professor X to be in space. I want him to be bald Phoenix. I want him to have access, let's deliver access to the Phoenix force. He wears the Dark Phoenix costume as a symbol of rebellion. <laughs> and I would just love to see his journey back to Earth. Now, it's very possible the series will just pick up with Xavier already back on Earth, especially if they do a time jump of five years. In which case, if they're going to do that, if they're just going to pick up Xavier's back in space, like, hey, you know, say, like, have a throwaway line being like, hey, remember when you were out of space and we're so glad you're back. I would absolutely adore 
adore, adore if they do Executioner Song and Onslaught for him, right? It will give purpose for why Bishop is there because the ex trader situation still has not been answered. And we know with Forge in the future, that was always a dangling plot there. A lot of it was supposed to be resolved with Beyond Good and Evil in the original series. That was supposed to be the original series finale. And Bishop Shard would have been stranded in the present and Psylocke and Archangel would have joined the X-Men. I don't know why they didn't just do that for season six and like shake it up a little bit, but it's fine. I... Again, with Xavier, those are going to be my options for him. He's in Shi'ar space, he's Bald Phoenix, and he is making his way back to Earth. He is going to have an imminent arrival, and everyone's going to have a beautiful reunion with him. And maybe he tells Gene and Cyclops, hey, X-Factor is really great. It's time to come back. It's time to unite everyone. So let's see where that goes. In terms of they do pick up five years later with Xavier there. I want them to have that iconic opening scene from X-Men 1 by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee, where they're all training. Then if you're going to do that, just adapt that issue verbatim. But again, I don't think they're going to adapt that issue verbatim because we've already seen character designs for Magneto. And Magneto needs to be in his traditional you know, outfit in order for that to work. But I do think for season two, they could open up with an adaptation of that opening sequence of them in the danger room from X-Men 1. Let's see. Let's see where they go. Next up is Magneto. And we already talked about this. I think Magneto adapting the storyline from the comics in the 80s is going to be perfect for him, especially since he's wearing that purple suit. I want him in that iconic pose right there. Um, I think he's going to be training the new mutants. I think the world court is going to come after him. I would love to see all that for him. I hope he has a relationship with Rogue. He's on the run and he has to go to Savage Land with Rogue. We know Sunspot is in there. I hope he is a mentor to Sunspot, Cannibal, and all the other new mutants. Again, maybe Ileana will be there. Maybe Ileana will get the legacy virus and 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 be cradled by, by, by them. And maybe that's going to be a significant loss for him and him seeing one of his pupils die from the legacy virus is going to be really tough on him. So I've, I've, I've kind of like already like said my piece on what I want out of Magneto from the series. Again, leading the New Mutants, relationship with Rogue, maybe something happens to the New Mutants and he you know feels personally responsible. The government's coming after him. Maybe it's led by Val Cooper, whatever adaptation they want to do of these stories. And he's on the run with Rogue in the Savage Land. Boom. Next up is Morph. And I think Morph is the one who's going to have the most change out of the series we know the character will be non-binary right now because we've seen them in their age of apocalypse sort of like white head and it's been confirmed the character will be non-binary i think they will be comedic i think they're gonna bring the humor in very dark situations much like the morph in the age of apocalypse comic books that's the only character i think they're gonna adapt closer to age of apocalypse maybe they will be taken away to the exiles later on and that's something we're definitely going to have to talk about at the end of this video what we can expect out of x-men 97 will we get spinoffs and i i think if i was marvel and i was looking at everything here it'd be like okay we have the we have an opportunity here to spin off the heck out of the x-men and give a tremendous amount of shows all right, next up will be Cable. And I think Cable is going to be training the new mutants with Magneto, right? I think maybe we'll see him with Domino. Maybe he'll be starting X-Force. I think maybe we'll see X-Force assemble in the background there. He'll have this, is he or is he not? Baby Nathan, Rachel's big or little brother from the future. I don't know. But I think it's going to be safe to say that he will have ties to to Gene and Cyclops. However, they want to sort of tackle that. Do they want to be cagey about it? I personally hope they're not being cagey about it. I hope the series picks up with Scott and Gene knowing full well that Cable is their son from the future. Maybe it's Madeline. You know, they're sort of aware of all of that stuff. I just don't want it to be a situation where in X-Men Apocalypse, it was like Quicksilver going up to tell Magneto, hey, I'm your son. But it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to say anything. That is such much like the love triangle. It is such a trope that is exhausted at this point. I really just want these characters to have these relationships and lean into it. But 
So Cable, New Mutants, relationship with Scott and Jean, however that works out, as well as sort of assembling X-Force in the background. Maybe he sees someone like Sunspice here like, hey, you know what? You have potential. <laughs> you know, he's going to grab him, Sam, and Danny. And that's another character I think we're definitely going to see in X-Men 97, even though she hasn't been announced. I would be shocked that we don't see Danny Moonstar. Danny Moonstar is too big of a character. She's too much of a leader in the X mythos. Give us Danny Moonstar. Next up is Bishop. Now, what are they going to do with Bishop? I feel like they did a lot with Bishop already. <laughs> in the original series, they, they did an adaptation of the X Trader storyline and they kind of meshed it in with Days of Future Past and they did the Beyond Good and Evil. The only thing I can really think of for a character like Bishop is that he's still trying to solve the X Trader situation. We know it's going to be Onslaught. We know it's going to be, you know, alluded to or resolved in the future. He's in the present. He's on a version of the gold team. He's on the main team. I don't know. He's he's an active member of the X Men. And I do think Bishop, when we see the opening credits, we're going to see Bishop's name right there and him using his powers, just like in the original opening sequence for all the main characters. I think Bishop is 100% going to be on the X-Men. And his his purpose there is that he's trying to figure out who was the X-Trader. You know, he is also a really good character to have well positioned for Age of Apocalypse because we know he is a huge conduit for Age of Apocalypse and the fallout that happens there. So Bishop right there, if I'm looking at him, Onslaught and Age of Apocalypse. Boom. That is the character's that is the character's role in X-Men 97. And that fucking slap because I want Onslaught adapted so badly for, for X-Men 97. Imagine if they do Onslaught right, if they're able to streamline that very convoluted story into something that is really well done. I have faith. I have faith in Bo de Mayo. I have faith in the writers. I have faith with the Lee Waltz guidance that they can do a really awesome adaptation of Onslaught. All right, next up we have Nightcrawler. And I think given that Val Cooper is in is in the show, she could have ties to Mystique and Mystique and Nightcrawler are going to pick up their relationship from where we last saw them, which was prayers, you know, and Mystique being shot and like falling over, you know, the waterfall or the dam whatever it was. I I I think Nightcrawler is going to be on the X-Men as well. And, and let me tackle this. I I think the the people were going to be the newer I think who has a high probability of joining the team it's going to be Bishop, it's going to be Nightcrawler, it's going to be Archangel, and it's going to be Psylocke. If I was on the production team, those four characters 100% will, will, will be on the team. Nightcrawler, let's see what they do with him. I hope they lean into his idea of faith. The character is a very faith-driven individual. We saw it in the comics during the 90s. Maybe he'll go off and start Excalibur with Captain Britain and Megan. Maybe they'll allude to that with an episode. It's quite possible that we'll pick up five years later and people are starting to go their own ways, which is going to be totally fine for me. I just hope that we get a really nice scene between Nightcrawler, Mystique, Rogue, and bring in Irene Adler, bring in Destiny. I would love to see Destiny in X-Men 97. And I think she's another character that how could you not bring her in, especially given her gravity on, on everything in the X-Men history. Destiny is one of those characters that, when you look back on it, has always had a role in the X-Books, right? Anywhere from, you know, Legion Quest to her diaries to Hawks Pox, Destiny is always going to play a role here. She's a great character to have in the background. So let's see that unfold. Next up, we have Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost. And I think it's quite possible that Emma will be an antagonist to Magneto. And she's going to have her Hellions. And they're going to die. And she's going to be in a coma. And she's going to possess Iceman. <laughs> And we'll get her starting Generation X in season two, season three, whatever. But if I was on the editorial team, I would definitely think that Emma Frost needs to start having her transitional moment from villain to superhero. She is such an iconic X-Men now. You cannot do an adaptation of the X-Men without Emma Frost because she is such a beloved character. She's got to be witty. She's got to be that Morrison Emma. And I really am looking forward to the potential they can do with her here. Again, what I would love for the character, let's set her up for Generation X. Her, Jubilee, Banshee, let's get them there in Generation X. 
Sebastian Shaw, I think he'll just be an antagonist. Maybe we'll get the Hellfire Masquerade Ball and that massacre with Lourdes. Oh, God, I, I don't think I'd have the heart to see that. But I think Sebastian Shaw, we can assume he'll stay largely villainous and you know, be an antagonistic force for Magneto and the New Mutants as he was in the comic books during that time. And maybe we'll see a subplot with his son, but let's see where it goes. So, you know, thinking about all of this that we just talked about, the one thing that's clear to me is that they can do so much. If they position the series correctly, they can spin off so many, so many shows. So we can get an X-Men blue team. We can get an X-Men gold team. Maybe we just get... X-Men, and it's just a blue and the gold team, but then we'll also get Generation X, we'll get X-Force, we'll get X-Factor, we can get so many stories out of this, maybe we'll we'll get an adaptation of the Outback X-Men, you know, maybe a Mojo Rebellion, and the one thing I, I hope that gets taken out of the series is that the potential to tell more stories, I would love it. Love it if we got maybe more of like mini movies, right? Not everything needs to be a full blown series, but maybe we get like a Disney Plus like mini movie event, like a one hour animation of like Dazzler and Longshot in the Mojo verse rebelling against Mojo. Again, I think the series could be a springboard for stuff like that. Imagine how cool an X Force series would be an animated series of x-force like not holding back that would be that would slap think about it for x-factor especially for generation x generation x would be a vibe all right familia that's it for today we're going to be covering the x-men panel 60th anniversary panel in just a few hours if we get anything substantial, we will obviously react to it. If it's just going to be them talking about the X-Men and the history of the X-Men, we won't record an episode. But if we're going to get any new stories, any new covers, any trailers for X-Men 97, if we're going to find out who won the X-Men vote, we will obviously cover it. I don't think we'll get any casting for the X-Men in the MCU unless Kevin Feige is a secret guest. But unless he's going to be appearing there, I'm just going to say no. It's not going to be... We're not going to be getting any X-Men casting just yet. We may... We may, we may get some Deadpool 3 information. Maybe we'll get, you know, James Marsden returning or something like that or or Patrick Stewart. We may get something like that. I wouldn't roll that out. But in terms of, like, unique casting for X-Men in the MCU, I, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it just yet for this. All right, Familia, hit us up at Power of X-Men on Instagram. We're not on Twitter or anywhere else. Just Power of X-Men on Instagram. Hit that subscribe button. It helps out so much. I really want to move content to a YouTube channel. So let us know your thoughts, any feedback, drop drop them in the comments there. 